bubbles, dark basement, scuttles, and grenades. Welcome to our monthly roundtable. This month we're discussing boundaries, protections, and curses. But before we get into it, a little bit of housekeeping. We are working on making our monthly roundtables more inclusive. So next month we are doing our Facebook Live during our recording so listeners can participate too. Look up our event on our Facebook group, Great North Witches Collective. One additional podcasting note, at the end of the podcast we discuss a website owned by Mortellus and we refer to Mortellus as he but believe that they might be a she or a they. We were not aware when we were making the recording whether they were male, female or something in between and hopefully have not offended anyone by adding in the incorrect pronouns. Hi everyone, it's Rose. Today we are talking about boundaries, curses, protections, things that are really necessary in witchcraft if you are practicing. And with me today I have... Hey guys, it's Nika. Hey guys, it's Corey. Hi, it's Kristen. Hi, it's Kyla. Hi, it's Sammy. Hi, it's Aiden. All right, so we're going to talk about things like boundaries, protections, using maybe some of the stronger spells in our repertoire. I'd love to hear, just as a starting question, how often people think about doing things like cleansing, upping the protections on themselves or their homes, if it's something that they practice all the time, or if it's just as needed. I know some people are like... (laughs) As she stares at me. (laughs) Some people are frequent protection (laughs) magic users, and other people kind of go, eh. What is everyone's thought? And then stares at Corey. (laughs) (laughs) Of course. (laughs) Um, I obviously... I am a huge protection and cleanser. It's something I do, I'm going to say monthly, at least. I try to. It's harder in the wintertime, but that's different. I think personally for me, I feel like every time you get a witch that's just like, I don't know where to start, it should be with cleansing and protections. And it doesn't even have to be like bad spirits. It's all about like negative energy. Witchcraft is about working with energy and negative energy clings to you it's just magnetic almost and it you can feel it it's heavy and it's gross and it just taints everything you do so i cleanse all the time i cleanse myself and my person and my house monthly the protections are probably bi-monthly or every three months or so but i mean i will you know kind of recharge and energize the protections in my house and sometimes i'll take them all down and just start from scratch if i feel like they're not working the way they're supposed to does anyone else notice that negative energy thing feeling i do similar like in the like warmer months i move i open the back door when i'm opening the front door and then i'll clean the front step and like move the energy through And when I say, like, I clean the front step, like, I'm scrubbing it. And I am scrubbing the concrete steps. And then I put some black salt, like, in a corner. I don't want to put it along the whole door because I'll run out. But I just put some in the corner. And then yesterday I did cleanse the front entryway because I couldn't cleanse. It's too cold. I'm not going out there. It's 40 below. So I cleansed our front entryway really well to move out some of that energy that has been coming into our home as of late. And I put a cinnamon stick on the top of the door. And we're just going to go with that. For, like, our cleansing protection. I like to think nothing wants to come over when it's minus 40 for evil spirits. <laughs> I don't want to be outside, so neither. what is it? What is it? You don't, you're cold, so they're cold or something? I wonder, but if they're outside and it's cold outside, they're going to come they're gonna want to come inside. True. Is it harder to I move s- that move spirits out of your home in the wintertime? That's what I was thinking. Are they home? Aren't they somewhere else? <laughs> but, uh, I was going to say, you'd have to talk to, like, yeah. the ghosty people here. Yeah. So, no, you know, what are, you, are, you, are they like, no? <laughs> no, there's there's very little, no difference between the time of the year. You're chewing them outside, you're chewing them out. Be, they, they don't care. <laughs> it'd be funny if you could get, like, donation mitts and hats. Right. And just leave them just outside the door. Just, just, just take these. Just be like, I got these for you. They're outside. Look, it's going to be so warm. It's going to be nice now. They're cold all the time. That's true. Right? So really... It's it's not a it's not an ordeal for them. Does anyone have like an ongoing cleaning ritual or protection ritual otherwise? We do. Uh, believe it or not, it's not even me that does it. Thinking about it, just listening to you ladies, it made me realize that my husband does it, not realizing he's doing it, which I just let him do it because it's great. I don't have to do it. He actually steam cleans all the floors with water and vinegar every week. <laughs> So I never, ever have to cleanse that negativity out of the house because he's always doing it for me, which is wonderful. 
I do have a, a sigil above my front door with some malachite that I feel kind of takes care of the front. I have um, a pentagram that sits at the back on a cord. There's minor things that we do, not to the extent that Nika does, but I think everybody just kind of gets their own feeling. Like we have a lot of spirits that pass through our home just attracted to us regularly. So we use more our personal auras to kind of push out anything if we come across it, which I've taught my son how to do in recent months. Is it possible for you to give us a quick run yeah. through how to do? Because I'm sure listeners would love to know how to project how to their aura. Project it. It's yeah. it's great and it's super easy. Uh, not everybody sees it the same way, but the way we do it, think of it like a coating of saran wrap over your skin, right? Maybe. It's, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it seems weird. So we think of it like a, a rubber band or uh, like a coating over your skin. And what you're going to do, that protects you at all times. It uh, doesn't matter where you are or what you're doing. That protects you. But if you want it to extend out to protect your surroundings, either your house or when you're casting or anything like that, because I don't cast circles, I just expand my aura out and it just encapsulates me and everything that I'm working with. What you do is you basically center yourself and you think of, let's say, uh, an orb of light in your core and you slowly push that light from your center out to your extremities, out to your skin, and then pushing that outward even farther. Once you get used to pushing your aura out, it feels like everybody's is different. It has different colors, different textures. At the beginning, it's going to be very exhausting, better to ground yourself, kind of absorb energy from an alternative source, whether it be a crystal or from the earth, because it is exhausting. But once you get used to it, it becomes a a natural thing that you just do and I extend mine all the way out to the corners of every room and it's like sticky so it like sticks to the corners of the room and it just clings there that's how we push out all those negative and you can actually feel it when they hit your aura it feels like a like a pulse almost against that aura and you can over time push them out especially stronger ones I was gonna ask if it was more visual or sensational like a kinesthetic experience it's kind of both Especially if you know what color your aura is, it becomes more visual and you can almost, it's like a vibration. And you, as you push it out, it kind of has a glimmer of color to it. Mine changed. It was red for the longest time, like a crimson red, and it changed to a wavy white at one point. Okay, I have, I have so many questions about this. This is <laughs> so far outside the realm of like my practice, right? Like, I think we what? struggle because we can't see. Yeah, you I, can't I don't. Visualize. We're blind. I can't, like I can't visualize, right? That's so right. like this is like all of this visualization stuff is so far outside of like the realm of my practice, and it just to me like your aura is supposed to be like you know just a reflection of of your energy. I've never read anything because it's not something I use. I've never read anything that says it's a shield right mm-hmm. like things get through your aura all the time so if you're pushing your aura out to like mm-hmm. the edges of your your wall or the outside of your home like what happens if something gets inside like now you don't even you're have vulnerable? that aura, that auric field around you right like would that not make you extra vulnerable it could i suppose i can't say that i've experienced anything because i guess i i started off with just the aura around my body for the longest time it took me a long time to be able to push it out it wasn't something that happened instantly. This is years of building that aura up. Do I, have I ever had something penetrate it? No, but is it, the, I to me, like, it, the, to me, that sounds a lot more like shielding as opposed to your aura. And I don't know if there's actually a difference between difference. the two, because again, you can't do it. It's, it's not something <laughs> right. That, I mean, like I can sit here and think about like having a shield and whether it works or not is, I mean, like. I tend to rely personally more on like jewelry as, physical as like physical objects. That's that's I'm a full practitioner. That's what I do. It's tangible physical yeah. objects and magic type of thing. But like I was just reading. Uh, I'm gonna say his name again. I'm sorry. I will eventually get past this. The love of your life. Yeah. <laughs> Who is yeah. it? Jason Miller. <laughs> I, uh, I was reading his uh, protection and reversal magic. Actually, I was listening to it, but it's the same thing. But he was talking about shielding and he was saying that you had to be careful with shielding all the time because you're not only cutting yourself off from the energy of the people that you don't want to affect you, you're cutting yourself off from everybody. Mm-hmm. And like people are going to feel like you're really distant if you're shielding all the time and I was like well that's a really interesting perspective because it's not something you hear about a whole lot Mm -hmm. and I don't know how true it is because well and I think there's a certain something to be said about being overprotective yeah Mm -hmm. because mine's not up all the time 
I wouldn't say that that's something that's but I would take or extension is more of an extension of your soul and setting your own limits on where you exist. Whereas you're talking about something hard and rigid, right? Like an yeah. aura isn't hard and rigid. It's no, it's, it's part of who you are. That's why yeah. I don't, but this is just from my experience with energy and how it feels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See the way you make it sound like a wall in a castle. Because that's what shielding is, is yeah. supposed to, that's what, how they explain it, right? Is, I mean, they tell you to, uh, you know, some of them tell you to picture and, you know, visualize light. Some of them tell you to visualize a brick wall or lightning or ice or whatever element or physical thing to you feels impenetrable. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. that's how you're supposed to visualize the shield. I think a more or a more is a breathing thing. Right. It's part of you, right? Right. So what are you guys who aren't visualizing doing for your... I think we are hands-on people. Yeah. So objects? Objects, things that we can see, because we... I was talking to my son about our not being able to see, and he's like, Mommy, you're blind. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> that is essentially kind of how it, it puts feels when they're talking about it. It puts a whole new spin on that it. band in the 90s, Third Eye Blind. Yes. And it's like, oh my god. <laughs> we are Third Eye Blind. Like, yes. <laughs> I do like the physical objects as well, but I may not see my energy or anything, but I can feel it. Mm -hmm. So I can go by feel as well as having a physical object or jewelry or clothing that helps as well. I've been working on, I guess, a type of shielding or an aura protection whenever I get too emotionally mucky, where I'm taking in too many other people's emotions. And even though I can't see it, I can kind of feel how it looks. And it's like an opal casing around my body. So it's iridescent and kind of shimmery. Though I cannot physically see it, I can feel that it's there. I am not surprised at all that Kyla's shield slash aura is iridescent and sparkly. <laughs> is there fairy wings on the shield? <laughs> I can have those. Because you have a physical aura and then you have a spiritual aura. Mm-hmm. I was told that my spiritual aura is massive. It's like apparently goes a couple feet above my head and around. And it, it changes colors so like most auras do. I had one lady when we were at a, like a craft fair. She was indigenous and I chatted with her for a little bit. She wasn't a witch, but she did tarot reading and stuff like that. Well, she asked me if I do like face stuff. I'm like, no, I usually kind of avoid fey magic. She's like, because they're attracted to you. (laughs) She's like, it looks like fireflies in your aura. Little sparkly things flying around. And it was kind of cool to to think she said, apparently they're attracted to your sense of humor. So I, I also do energy work for protection. And it's pretty similar to what everyone's already said. But one thing that I've... It's a little bit different. One thing that I do is that instead of imagining it like a white light coming from me, I just try to imagine a white light surrounding me so that, and I, I never, it's like, Nico, what you said was so interesting. It's like, are you blocking out the bad and the good? So I've never, I haven't really thought about that, but usually my intention is when I think of this bright white light is to protect myself from harm or from negativity. Um, but maybe I don't, maybe I don't know. Maybe it, it protects me from too much risk too. I don't know. And some, I don't know, sometimes taking risks is good, but what I like to do is I don't do a bunch in one sitting. Like I'll try to remember to do it like once a day or once every, once a week or something like that, where like I'm in a car ride or something. And I just do that visualization and I say like a small incantation and I, I feel like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, I feel like it's working. Like I get a sort of tingly sensation that goes through my body. And I know that there's some sort of energy work that's happening. Um, yeah. And I found that doing that regularly does work. One thing that I, that I did find really worked too, was when we were over, Corey, we were over at your house and we did like it felt like it was like I did a tarot card reading, but everybody sort of had a little piece to say. So having that sort of community aspect of people contributing made the spell really strong mm-hmm. and really powerful, and it made it work really well. So I think that community attention, excuse me, could also be a really great way for everybody to benefit from it. I have a few things I do. <laughs> well, it, it's funny because it's not even rituals or anything like that that I do. It's just 
most people would view it as mundane things. A big part of it, I mentioned my hair. Where I came in earlier, it was down because I had to let it dry. I took a last minute shower. <laughs> it was too greasy. I couldn't take it anymore. But I normally am always going to be seen with my hair either up, tied in a bun, twisted into what looks like braids, or I'm going to veil. Because for me, hair is very, very sacred, which is why I'm growing it out too. And as I'm growing it out, I don't want people's negative intentions tied to it, which is why I really only let my mom and my best friend cut it. And that's also teachings and in indigenous practices where select people can touch your hair as well because of intentions. And if something bad happens, you're supposed to cut some of it. Is that so in some traditions, okay. I know in Ojibwe traditions, which isn't mine, but a lot of them are very similar. If you lost someone like your mom or your dad or your sister or brother, you cut your hair and that signifies your grief and you're letting them go as the well. The spirit go. Yeah. And then you go back on that journey to grow it out. Another thing that I do is actually today, which I started a bit before we came over, it's Sundays just ended up being my major cleaning days. And it makes sense because I use a lot of citrus to cleanse, to kind of brighten up the atmosphere, to liven up the air. And Sunday citrus all has to do with the sun, just really brightening everything out. Open my windows, I get that fresh crisp air in while I also smudge. That's a smoke cleansing practice that Indigenous and Métis people do. So I do that on Sundays, and it always resets me. I, I take a nice shower with specifically scented things. And then another thing that I do more, that's not so much on protection. It's more for getting peace or putting boundaries. Where I've spoken before, I think in another episode where I've accidentally cursed someone in my dreams, where we were talking about how we visualize and how like me going into certain episodes, I can accidentally release spells and manifestations. There is a practice I was taught, it's called benching. And the reason why it's called benching is because you're supposed to visualize, but I have a suggestion in case you can't. You're supposed to visualize, you build the world around you and you visualize yourself meeting someone on a bench in a park somewhere or somewhere sacred and you talk to them. You have full control, like they, they can't say shit, it's in, it's, it's in your head really. And you say your peace to them or you say whatever boundaries you're setting with them. I've done it a few times and it worked really, really well for people that I had to let go. Can't say that about my ex right now. <laughs> Still entangled with him. But I've done it with many other people. I had to let them go. They weren't people that had good intentions for me. And it brought the closure. And all of a sudden, the ties just started to break off with them. If you can't visualize... I was going to say, it reminds me a little of the letter method. Yeah, you... that was another one I was going to suggest. It's like you literally write to them. It's physical, right? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. tangible. It's there. And I'm very much on physical things as well. Because for me, it's like it's there. It's symbolic. You're wearing it like that carries the intentions. You can actually anoint things. But I was also going to say like there's nothing stopping you from just going for a walk somewhere, finding a quiet bench, just sitting there, grab yourself a tea or coffee. Nobody's going to question you. But bring a sock puppet if you want to make it more. <laughs> um, just grab a little Bluetooth earpiece. Yeah. Just yeah. stick it in your yeah. ear and just pretend you're having a Let's conversation with them over the phone, right? I have conversations with people that are there in my car all the time. <laughs> I'm prepping for controversy is what I'm really doing. It's like thinking about my comebacks first. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's go into a little bit more physical stuff, because I think that's something everyone can access. I know Kyla was going to tell us, what are some of the things that you've been doing with eggs? I've been making um, eggshell powder, which has a lot of different uses. After you boil your eggs and you, or you use them for fried eggs, you boil the shells to make sure they're clean. You peel out the membrane and then put them in the oven on a low heat for about 10 minutes around 200 mm. and to drop to make sure they're all dried out and you, then you can grind them up into a powder. Eggshell powder can be used for protection for not only negative energy but also psychic and spiritual work. So if you astral project or if you're in contact with spirits or if you're doing any psychic 
activities, it's really good to have your, if you do a circle, to do a circle with a bit of eggshell powder. It's or a to take a great alternative to salt if you're exactly. doing outdoor yeah. rituals. Um, you can also press the eggshell powder into chalk for writing sigils or drawing your circle. Taking a dab of it and putting it on your third eye helps give you more amplification and focus of doing psychic work and also mm-hmm. protection as well. Protecting your body or while it's doing other things spiritually. I like to use it in a um, barrier spray. Basically, instead of smudging, if you can't burn things in your house, because I have a very sensitive fire alarm and people in my house who are sensitive to scents, I like to make a water spray. So using like moon water and other protective herb into the the moon water and just kind of spray your windowsills and your threshold. I wanted to hear kind of what people thought about the difference between using eggshell versus salt. Because I know outside salt is dangerous because it's bad for the ground. Right. But I don't know if anyone can tell an energetic difference between using salt and eggshells. I find salt is really good for purification. Okay. Whereas eggshell powder is a little more for protection. But then again, I add graveyard dirt to mine. To your eggs or to your salt? To my salt. Okay. To make your black salt. To make my uh, gray salt, the gray salt. And I I grind it to the point where it's a powder. It's not gravelly at all. Okay. So it's like powder, like, so it's really, really like a dust. I use both. I have several different types of salt in my house. I've Mm -hmm. got Himalayan salt. I've got Epsom salt. I actually have a black salt upstairs that I got at a, uh, at a crystal sale. Unfortunately, it smells a lot like sulfur, so it's because it's burnt stuff in yeah, salt. It, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a very sulfuric kind of salt, so it's not the best smelling. But I mean, I've probably got like five or six different types of salt in here, and I will use different types of salt depending on what I'm doing. But I typically use salt for cleansing and purification, and then the eggshell for protection. I wasn't sure because I know for new witches, it all seems the same, right? Like it's... Well, that's why I add everything all together in mine. It does. Have a... <laughs> I'm like, I, can't, I can't do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit. No, no. Just stick it all, all together. Yeah. Exactly. Because I have black salt in mine as well. I have Himalayan salt in mine. And then I have the graveyard dirt in mine and as well as like um, ash as well. So I had this problem when I make my teas because I make a big batch of tea every week, like herbal yeah. tea. And I'm like... I'm just going to put these three things in. And then I have my big bin of herbs and I'm like, but I could also just throw in this just in case. And oh, what if I just, just next I have a recipe I follow. You follow. Okay. I have you a have control. Yes, I have control of it. <laughs> Although I really wanted to add goof, gopher, gopher, gopher dust, goofer goofer dust, dust. Just, cause it's to it, just because it's so much fun. And I was like, no, don't do it. <laughs> <It's> goofer dust. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was like wondering the same thing. <laughs> it's like, um, it's like a repelling or vanishing kind of thing. You you put it in you like your enemy's shoes. Dispel powder. It's a dispelling okay. powder. Yes. I would just put valerian root in their shoes and then they think stink for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, What's the main ingredient in goober? I don't know. I bought it because oh. I've, I've never seen it, so I wanted to to try it out. You guys are like the slowest witches I've ever. Tried. I'm looking at a book. Listen, I, it's okay. Books goober something. dust powder, all good. A good all-purpose hexing powder always includes at least a spoonful when dis. Disposing of a poppet, graveyard dirt, and patchouli leaves or root. And there's also a second recipe here that says black pepper, cayenne pepper, graveyard dirt, a wasp's nest, or snake skin crushed and crumbled. And that is in Utterly Wicked by Dorothy Morrison, which is a great book on hexes and curses if you are looking for a reference. And I find patchouli really pisses a lot of people off, so I mean, that makes sense. But this is a witch thing. Witches love patchouli. Other people are like, why does it smell in here? (laughs) You were going to say something. Mm, For eggs, like cleansing was just protection. I've seen eggs, the whole egg being used for cleansing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We were talking Uh, about that earlier before the recording. Yeah, and I've seen, like, apparently it's popular in Mexico. They, like, rub the full egg on their Mm -hmm. head. But it's not then, a cleansing. It's actually to check if you are cursed. If you are okay, cursed. if you are it's, cursed. And it's the whole body. Okay. Yeah. And you yeah. can cleanse with it as well. Oh, not, I, it, not just for checking for okay. any curses, but it is if yeah. you, when you do it, if you're focusing any of your negative energy into the egg afterwards, like while you're doing it, that's a, that's the cleansing ritual. If you're doing it to see if you're cursed, it's more of just moving it around and... Trying You're to, trying to catch the curse. Trying to catch it. And yeah. when you crack it in there, a lot of people will add salt and they'll add cayenne yeah. pepper and stuff like that to the glass that they've cracked it into mm-hmm. to help disperse that. 
that oh, curse. Okay. That actually yeah. is um, part of a return to sender spell yes. as well. Yes. Uh, if you're doing that, if you feel like you're being cursed and you do the egg cleanse and you throw in like cayenne pepper and you can put in a pinch of rosemary and salt for self-protection as well. Garlic is another good thing to add and you basically send whatever is attached to you back where it came from. Yeah, I have a question about that because I think about it a lot because I do believe you can self-curse yourself. Self-cursing versus other people cursing you. When I look at a lot of Facebook groups, there's always that one post, like, someone's been cursing me. I feel like I'm being cursed. Do you guys feel like you're getting cursed a lot? I don't no. worry about no. it a lot. It's ironic because we were just having this conversation the other night, right? Because I've been having a string of bad luck and I've been having some headaches. And a lot of those things are very typical signs of hexes and curses and stuff like that, right? And I, particularly if you pay attention to them. You know, I mean, like one or two things happening is kind of coincidence, but when you've got a whole string of them lining up, it's time to start wondering about it. And I did some divination and I was literally told by my deity that I am worrying for nothing. Was very, very strictly told that I need to just start practicing more. I'm getting too lazy in my seasonal affective disorder. I had a similar experience last week. Where you thought you were cursed? No, but where I was very clearly told, it's fine, you can stop, chill the f*** out. Just, okay. You you did everything you're supposed to. Just yeah. stop. I feel like certain, from my experience, buildings get cursed from years and years mm-hmm. and years of energy. So it's funny because Nika's curse is related to heat right now. Yeah. That's been the issue. My, my house, house that I moved into mm-hmm. six or seven years ago clearly has a water curse. I feel like you can bring your energy in and after time it kind of neutralizes or balances it out, but it it takes a long time. I am starting to wonder, because in talking to you about this the other night, if my husband might actually be the one with the heating curse in houses, because this is the second house in a row now Mm -hmm. where we have had heating issues over the winter. The last house we were in was uh, oil heat. And the landlords would consistently forget to to fill fill the tank over the course of three winters. We had like every single year heat would shut off and it's literally pull out all the space heaters and then like turn on the stove. And now it's happening here. For me, I always noticed the water curse would kick up more when there was emotional stuff happening in the house or being blocked in the house. Whereas for fire, I would assume it's something related to passion or related self-expression. That would just be my guess off the top. Of so I mean, this question that I have, I mean, in thinking that this is my husband that might be carrying this, how the fuck do I fix that? <laughs> because, like, he is not witchy. And, like, if, and if I looked at him and was just like, okay, like, I'm pretty sure you're cursed. Like, can I just, like, just sit still and let me do some witchy shit? He'd be like, fuck off. Like, just leave me alone, right? Like, can you do it while he's sleeping? The- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All I can think of is from Friends where Phoebe is, like, picking at Ross's oar. He's like, stop picking things out of my oar. <laughs> like, how the fuck do you do that? I'd say, like, maybe he could just, like, drink some and then he gets in, like, a goofy mood. Like, what's this rock do? I'll show you. (laughs) Swallow this eggshell. (laughs) Kyla was talking about, you know, energy and protecting herself. And I know she speaks about being an empath sometimes. Something that was told to me a very long time ago when I was training with a healer was that my energy is just getting, like, sucked out of me by everyone. And I think about that a lot when it comes to being around other people that especially if you have a hard time with personal boundaries it's easier for energy to fall out of you and that stuck with me so much that that was probably 15 years ago and I still think about it physically I can feel that the word no has so much more power in stopping energy sucking than maybe even any spell I can think of I've definitely read some stuff really small rituals that I mean you can do daily like just before going to bed about calling your energy back to you so I mean like you're talking about you know I mean like as you proceed through your day different people are taking different pieces of you and you're using different parts of your energy to communicate with them in whatever way right and you literally just sit down at the end of the day and there's lots of different ways you can do it whether it's with candles or herbs or whatever but a lot of it's just meditating on calling your energy back to you it's yours I like it's that. your I energy that. so it's drawn to you no matter what and if you call it it will return it kind of like back. taking your spoons back yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> i've started like if i leave a situation where i'm with people and i feel very like drained or i gave pieces of me for no reason generally while i'm driving away when every time i breathe in i say like i'm breathing my energy back in and i'm breathing their energy out because Recently, I realized I can take my energy back. 
And so it's something I've been working hard on. I think giving their energy back is an important part too, right? Because mm-hmm. I was talking about, you know, like negative energy clinging to you and stuff like that when you work with energy and it's the thing you can feel. And I think it's a very important thing to point out that you can totally 100% be like, I don't want this. Yeah. Like, have it back. It's I'm all yours. So yeah, I don't, I don't want it. Curse, yeah. like, um, when you guys talk about curses and your experiences with what that is, to me, in my home, I would more read that for myself as like, I haven't moved the negative energies out. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't socialize enough. With them. <laughs> uh, <right>? <laughs> but I do, however, pick up a lot of energy along the way. And then things, you, I can feel it in my house. It just gets kind of like yucky. Maybe I just need to cleanse my husband. Throw him in a <laughs> salt <laughs> bath. Just roll, <laughs> just <laughs> quietly put an egg around him. <laughs> oh, <he's sleeping. laughs> Pretend it's foreplay. Just be like, shh. <laughs> <laughs> in this hat. <laughs> like, Everyone. let me put this cold egg on your back. <laughs> Freezer eggs. You like it. <laughs> Doesn't that feel nice? <laughs> so that's how you get rid of curses. Not yeah. only do you throw eggs at people, you throw frozen eggs at them. <laughs> this is like the second or third episode of Kit <laughs> Kyla just saying throw people. shit at people. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the best solution. Just... She's the most like whimsical of all of us, and she's probably. She's, she's, always, she's always like, just throw something <laughs> she throw something. <laughs> she's also connected to the fae. Well, you know what? Sometimes it's the simplest things at work. <laughs> uh, right? There's one thing I'll talk about, and it has to do with physical stuff. So um, before it started getting really cold, I went for a walk around where I live, and I just gathered some sticks, and I thought, okay, I'm going to make a, like a broomstick out of this or a makeshift broomstick out of this. Um so that I so that I can use it if I want to sweep away negative energy or if I want to put it like above where my door is with maybe like some prunes or some sigils or something like that where it would stop anybody like who wishes me harm or any negative energy from actually coming in my door so I thought that that I felt like that was really good too because it was really grounding just to like go out for a walk go in the community and just see like oh okay like I can easily make it's always nice when it's DIY. What were we yeah, talking? We were just talking about something. Pretty I'm sure it had something to do with dead bodies. <laughs> oh yes, I was going to DIY dead bodies because oh, you needed to make something. Oh, that's right. The oil. Uh, yes, it was such a weird. So <laughs> the type of moss that grows on trees and hangs down, but it also used to grow on dead bodies that they would leave hanging, and they would use it to make a water that you bathe the weapon in that it had harmed you. So if you're run through with a sword but you don't die, you do sympathy magic where you essentially heal the sword. But the problem is, I don't have a lot of dead bodies with moss lying around. So <laughs> right? I said, we could always make it. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Yes. Find that moss on a dead tree. Yes, you could, obviously. I think the idea was that it's supposed to be on a dead person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Trees are people, too. <laughs> <laughs> Just anyway. because you don't understand the way they talk doesn't mean they're quiet. This is true. So it's interesting because they have proven on trees talk and that they talk through mushroom yes. Yes. communication mushroom lines. Yeah. There are definitely mm-hmm. trees oh, yeah. in the forest that are like, do not touch me. <laughs> yeah. And then there are definitely trees that are like, hey, you can come say hey. <laughs> <laughs> and is it species dependent or tree dependent? Not, not really. I notice a lot of the older trees will be more of like, I'm just, I'm chilling. Like, this is fine. I see cool. you. But the, the younger trees that are like, you want to touch me? I love Hi, that. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> like kids. We were talking about people obviously cursing us and that we don't worry about it that much, but... But, in the event that it does happen, I came across something really cool and exciting. I was reading Amy Blackthorne's Protection Magic. It's a book, obviously. There's a section in the book that's uh, written by the author Mortalis. I've never read anything by, by this person, and he just, he sounds absolutely fascinating. And he was talking about ways to remove particularly sticky curses or bindings that you just can't seem to get rid of. And he was talking about how, like, the best way to kind of remove these things from you is to, like, metaphorically die. He is a necromancer and he works with a lot of like really cool, creepy stuff. If you check out his website, which I believe is mortalis.com, his suggestion was to like, you know, metaphorically, metaphysically die. Both. both. He takes corpse water, which is water that has been used to wash a corpse, and grave salt, which is salt that has been consecrated within a graveyard with uh, particular herbs that are used in necromancy. Mm-hmm. And you consecrate yourself 
with the corpse water and the grave salt in order to kind of kill off your aura and then meditate on that death to kind of cut all of those ties from you. And then you would reconsecrate yourself with fresh water and mineral salt to reinvigorate your aura and kind of bring it all back to life. And the idea is, is in that metaphysical, metaphorical death, you are having all of those things that are tied to you kind of gone. And I thought it was a really fucking cool idea. And you pointed out on his website that he sells corpse water. He sells corpse water and the grave salt. On his website. Is it ethically sourced corpse water? You can make your own corpses and wash them, right? I mean, like, I mean that's yeah, a if we're getting for a yeah. DIY right there. But is there, it right? organic? Because like, I need mean, it locally is it sourced. Spring? Yeah. Does it have to be distilled? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's on his website. He sells both the corpse water and the grave salt. The other thing I thought was really cool on his website is he does sliding scale pricing. Oh. Uh, so if you can afford to pay more, oh. do it. Because he will offer the lower pricing for the people that he wants everybody to have access to it. I think it's so fucking cool and I wish that more people would do it, you know, like just so that things are a little more accessible to everybody Mm -hmm. everywhere. Not just witchy stuff, like just everything. Oh, in life. life. And that's our thoughts on boundaries, protections and curses. We'll be back again on this topic, I can tell, because there's lots left to touch on it. But for now, this is where we're leaving you. Don't forget to follow and subscribe us on whatever app you're listening to, and we'll catch you next time. Bubbles. Dark basement. Scuttles. And nails.